Okay, we're here with the last part of the deployment mini series, uh, mostly because the Death Watch have seemed to run out of keywords. So this is the last video we can make. Uh, deployment right, so versus counter deployment. Deploy. This. Yes, this is effectively a culmination of a lot of the things we've gone over. There's more to talk about than what we've gone over when it comes to deployment, because again, it's this giant mini game inside the, you know, bigger game. Um, but the some of the key factors, if we take what we've kind of talked about so far, um, now we actually have to decide, you know, where we're placing them. How many of those units do they have a plan and I need to deploy them here uh, because they have a job to do? And how many of those units is like, OK, but this the job of this unit is to be my tank busting. I've got like only two units that have good tank busting. Their job is to counter deploy my opponent's scary tanks and deal with them. <laughs> so, um, again, with that plan, you basically want to try to evaluate as you're deploying, or maybe even before you're deploying, um, kind of look at most of your units and decide what is their priority on turn one or two. Is I, I'm going to take my battle end unit, and their job is to go stand on a circle turn one. I don't need them to kill anything. I just need to contest the center objective. And if my opponent doesn't answer that, I'm going to score primary on turn two. That sounds great, right? That's their plan. You have other units that are like, this unit is meant to absolutely charge whatever's on the center objective because we know that we're going to have a bunch of like fighting over the center but they're not quite fast enough to get a turn one charge so that's their job they're going to move defensively turn one turn two they're going to get you know uh, a charge on turn two that's almost guaranteed and they're going to get fights first and they're going to like wreck the thing that they're trying to hold the center with having these priorities in mind for your individual units on or during deployment is going to help you stick to that plan as you continue throughout the game. And it's also going to help you from not misdeploying and putting this like slow moving blade guard or terminators off to the side. And now it feels like they didn't do anything for two plus turns because they couldn't get to an enemy unit. Um, and then you also want to use your deployments to influence your opponent's deployments. We talked about redeployments and infiltrates and stuff like that to where you want to, let's say you've got one big scary vehicle. I've got like, I've got a monolith, right? If I deploy that early, I get to tell my opponent where to put their tank busting. That's a lot of power you have by just the order in which you place your different units being able to dictate what your opponent does. Counter deployments basically work the, are, are the same thing, but from the opposite end, right? Like if your opponent deploys things, you want to counter deploy your tank busting to theirs, um, and you want to have the best matchups. As long as they don't redeploy the monolith later, it turns out you can feel good about they've got a big tank over here. I want to kill it. This is the most optimum unit I have to try to kill it. It's in a position to where it's going to be able to see, despite all the terrain and movement and whatever. I'm going to be able to see them on turn one and get some damage in there. Feels good. And that goes with a bunch of different stuff, not just anti-tank, but also anti-horde, stuff like that. Uh, you also want to try to counter-deploy counter based upon survival. If they put their tank-busting unit out too early, and you look and you're like, I mean, you've only got like, you've got two ballistas, and that's like your whole tank-busting, right? Well, if you put those out too early, because they're vehicles and you were worried about move blocking or whatever, capitalize on your opponent's choices and say well okay i'm going to put my tank where those ballistas aren't going to be able to see it on turn one or maybe even turn two because terrain's in the way so you can counter deploy for survival not just best kill matchups right 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 uh and then that also sort of goes with one of the things we we're talking about earlier in the series is it like if if you have an anti-tank and an anti-horde unit and your opponent has a tank and a horde unit and if after are, after deployment of these two and two things, they're not lined up, like they're in opposite mm -hmm. lanes. Um, you can let's say if you have the redeploy ability through some character or whatever, it. you can fix it. Yeah. Yep. The same is true for the other person. They don't want the good matchup. If they have the redeploy and you don't, they can be like, Well, let me give you the bad matchup. I want you to shoot your anti tank at my hordes. 
waste your high power shots on one unit at a time and then use your anti-horde stuff against like a tank where it's not going to do very much damage that it goes both ways pretty Correct. much and it's it's just about leveraging this if you put enough like thought and effort into your deployment it's way easier to make good choices not just turn one and turn two but the whole game if my horde busting unit is in a reasonable position to where i can get to their horde units it's going to be way easier to make a good choice than if i put my horde busting on the side that they deploy their tanks i deploy my horde busting first right and they deploy their tanks next well now i could get my horde busting over to my opponent's horde but it's going to take me at least a turn if not two to traverse the board because my horde busting is infantry and slow and whatever else in order to get the right matchup to start getting the efficiency that i paid points for so again it's it's your opponent is trying to stop you from being efficient. You're trying to be as efficient as possible. Going over these deployment plans in your head ahead of time while you're deploying and really evaluating what it is you're doing during your practice games, etc. This is what's going to make the whole game easier on you as you're playing because it's way easier to make good target priorities when there's an appropriate unit that the unit is designed to shoot at than it is to what's my best option when I can shoot at like a repulsor or a ballistis and all I have is bolt guns. I, I could make a better choice, but it turns out they're both bad, right? So what do I do? Yeah, exactly. Um, and obviously this scales up. I, I use it like an example of like where it's two units versus their two units. In reality, mm -hmm. you have like 15 aside or something. You know, there, there's right. like way more complexity than that. And then you have all the other deployment types and redeployments and scouts and infiltrate. It can get pretty deep pretty fast. Um, but you got to stick to the basic concept and just try to look at the matchups, where you're going to move. Uh, this is where the fact that infantry move through buildings and vehicles do not really, really starts to matter a lot as like the board Absolutely. fills up with units. Um, yeah. And it's also a note that in most factions, not all, but most factions, some of your best tank busting is stuck on vehicles. So the, the thing that can bust tanks the best is also sometimes the least mobile as far as getting good sight lines and making up for misdeploys, things like that. Yeah, no, totally. Um, yeah. Well, you, right. got, you got anything um, else on that one? No. I, I, so this is kind of the end of the mini series. Again, there's more involved in deployments. I tried to keep most of these pretty generic, so they would invoke good thoughts and just uh, discussions, whether it's in your play group or uh, basically with yourself, trying to uh, pl play better, make better choices, make the game easier to play as you go. Um, but it can get so much deeper than this, especially when you start focusing on but what faction do you play when you're playing whatever faction, Tyranids, etc. And your your play group tends to have a lot of, you know, uh, Drakari or whatever else. You can get even deeper into some of these questions than we touched on yeah. when you start thinking about matchup specific things uh, and what kind of tricks your opponent has or tends to bring. Uh, totally, totally. All right, I'll catch you all in the next one. Hey everyone, thanks for watching the video. Go ahead and crump the like button. Subscribe if you want to watch more of our stuff. Uh, we run a tiny little friendly local game store with an online store too called Go For Games. You know, where you go for games. Anyway, um, support us and uh, have fun. Thanks so much.